Hey, how you doing? Scott here from Scott's Bass Lessons. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a killer ear training exercise that's going to be able to, it's going to bring the George Benson out in your bass playing. Check this out. Okay, in this lesson, I want to give you an exercise that I've used to, it's an ear training exercise, but also it really helps you to connect your, your voice, yep, yeah, singing, your voice, and I'm not on about backing vocals here, I'll, you know, I'll go into this in a minute, your voice and what you're playing, okay? So for instance, I'm sure you've heard guys like George Benson, do stuff like that. And it's not that he's a weird genius, although George Benson is a genius. Um, it's not that I'm a weird genius that I can do that. It's because I've used certain exercises that can connect exactly, you know, what, how, what I'm thinking to my bass. Okay, so I'm really not thinking about licks or anything like that. I'm just, I'm playing what I'm hearing. And there's some exercises that you can get into your bass playing to make this happen. So the first thing is to be able to sing a major scale while you play. So let's take the C major scale. Let's take it from here. Eighth fret on the E string, right? So do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And then back down, and I'm not gonna try and sing it backwards. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, da, di, di, da, di, di, da, di, di. Okay? Now once you can do that, then you want to be looking at the different intervals that you can create with the major scale. So for instance, we can play in broken thirds. But we need to be able to sing that as well at the same time. And then back down. I do apologize for my singing. I'm not much of a singer. Um, but, you know, we need to sort of like get over ourselves and just start doing this because don't worry, just lock, your way, lock yourself away in the room and do it on your own. It's fine. Um, although my wife does hear me do this. So, and my wife is a singer. So she's just like, oh, Scott, man. <laughs> anyway, meanwhile. Um, then after you've played it in broken thirds, and you can sing that, then play it in fourths. You see, you'll hear I went a bit off there, so... And then you can do it back on onwards. So that's fourths. Then you play it in fifths. And then you can do that down as well. And then what do you think is coming next? So we've done the full major scale, then we did thirds, we did fourths, we did fifths, now six. And then, you know, you can back down. Um, and then you can do sevens. 
and you know I'll let you do so that as well so really once you can do that and really try and take it slow because it's really easy to sort of like rush, the, rush through the, these things and think you're getting it right but just take it really slow so you're connecting these your ears and your mind with what's going on on the fretboard once you can do that then try and just improvise up and down the major scale in one area and sing what you're playing and use all of the things that we worked on the thirds the fourths fifth six sevenths use all those within your improvisation so you can just play freely up and down the c major scale and then use some of these intervals so that would sound something like Okay, and then when you after you've done that, then try and sort of like you know break it up, solo over your favorite piece or whatever you're doing, you know, right now in your practice time, and try and sing the intervals when you're doing it. It's a really, really great exercise. It gets you away from just thinking, oh, a third's a third, a sixth, a sixth, you know, a sixth is just a label, but what does that actually sound like? Do you recognize that when it's played, when you hear somebody play that interval? Do you recognize that? Not for the name, but for, for, for the quality, you know? Do you recognize a third, major third, a minor third? And can you sing those? This exercise is a really, really great um, way to get this into your playing. And just a massive thanks as well to all the guys in the academy over at Scott Space Lessons because it's because of them that, you know, this conversation came up about this, this whole exercise. It's an exercise that I used years ago I hadn't, you know, hadn't thought about it in years, and uh, and from this conversation on the uh, the campus in the forum, it kind of just, you know, jogged my memory, and I was like, oh, that, that, there's that badass, badass exercise I used to use. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. If you have done, click like. I will love you forever. I'll send you loads of bass love, and. And other than that, go over to scottsbasslessons.com, check it out. There's hours and hours of lessons just like this. And also, we'll link to it on the screen, but at Scott's Bass Lessons, we have something called the Bass Players Toolkit. It's a totally free resource where I've bundled together some courses, um, like a buyer's guide with Chris May from Overwater Basses, um, some loads of free play-along tracks, a modes mini course, um, loads of stuff. I'll link to it somewhere on this screen probably at the end of the video as well, Denmark, uh, DMAC behind the camera. And, uh, and other than that, take it easy, and I'll see you next time in the shed.